Good evening to our supervisor, Dr. Lam Manki, and our examiner, Dr. No Fritza Harun. I am David Lim from Group 14, and my colleagues are Arifin, Nadira, Priya Dashini, and Wen Ching. Our plant design project title will be the Waste Polyethylene Terephthalate Processing Process Plant Design Plan. Firstly, let me run through the outline which covers the introduction, market study, plant location, process screening, process flow diagram, preliminary mass balance, economic evaluation, heat integration, piping and instrumentation diagram, and hazard and operability study. Firstly, a bit of introduction about plastic waste. Plastic waste is the accumulation of plastic objects in the Earth's environment which ends up in landfill, developing world, and unregulated dump site. Plastic is also widely consumed due to it being inexpensive yet durable as containers and bottles. But however, it took more than 400 years to degrade due to its chemical structure which makes it non-biodegradable. This has resulted in environmental problems such as over abundance of plastic waste. For, for example, in the UK, 5 million tons of plastic is consumed each year and only 25% of them is recycled, while 75% is thrown away and pollutes the environment, especially the oceans, which, co which causing damage to the ecosystem. Malaysia is also facing a similar problem with plastic waste since 2010. On year 2010, a total of 81,884 metric tons of scrap plastic were accumulated in the country. And the, and the numbers increased from year to year up until year 2017, where 549,786 metric tons of scrap plastic were accumulated in Malaysia. This has resulted in Malaysia being ranked as the worst country in plastic pollution. In fact, on year 2013, only 2% of the plastic were recycled and burned, while on year 2019, 700 tons of plastic waste were imported into the country. In order to combat this problem, it, it is suggested that a plant which converts 500,000 tons of PET per year is built, built, which will be discussed in this, which will be discussed in this presentation. Now let's look at our materials, starting with our input materials, polyethylene thiophthalate or PET for short. PET is a polymer from the polymer polyester family with excellent mechanical thermal, chemical resistance, and dimensional stability properties. There are two, it is also transparent and opaque. There are two ways of synthesizing PET, which is the esterification method on teraf, terafetalic acid and ethylene glycol, which will create PET and water as a byproduct, or the transesterification between ethylene glycol and dimethyl terafetate, which will create PET and methanol as a byproduct. 60% of the PET global production is used for water production, which accumulates 30% of the global demand. And meanwhile, PET also has an application such as the production of textiles, fibers, films, and bottles. And now, one of our main products in this, in this process is pyrolysis oil. Pyrolysis oil is made out of plastic from carbon, which is made from carbon, hydrogen, and a few other elements, which makes them non-biodegradable. Due to its non-biodegradable nature, it results in an overabundance of non-biodegradable plastic in the environment. So in order to solve this problem, it is suggested that the plastic is converted into pyrolysis oil, and the pyrolysis oil is used as an alternative fuel for the diesel engine. This will help minimize the, the overabundance of plastic and sometimes make use of it. For example, India has been applying this concept in order to solve their increasing crude oil price demand and, and, uh, and their unemployment issue. And, as, and, while we're doing, and also, now let's look at hydrogen gas, which is also one of our byproducts from the plant. Hydrogen gas is the smallest element in the periodic table, and it is also colorless, odorless, tasteless, and flammable. It also consists of 0.14% of the Earth's crust weight. There are three methods of producing hydrogen, which is the natural gas reforming, charcoal gasification, and hydrogen production by electricity via electrolysis method. It is used in the chemical and petroleum industries such as hydrogenation process or ammonia process. The objective of this project is to monitor the waste plastic for suitable chemical production, to select and determine visible plant capacity and location with adequate justification, to perform economic evaluation as a basis to select the most feasible and economic process work with maximum profit, to design a safe plant according to code of practice and industry guidance, 
with plan layout, plot plan layout, to perform detailed hazard and operational study analysis based on the chosen node, and to design plan which recycles polyethylene terephthalate waste into a newly value added products. And as for our scope of study, the aim of this project is to design a plant in which PET is used to produce pyrolysis oil, hydrogen gas, and hydrocarbon. There also, we also research on a few facts such as market potential, poten properties of feedstock, types of process, and strategic location which are related to our project. Those, not, those information gathered from the literature review are then used to create an alternative process and decide and compare based on their advantages and disadvantages. Mass balance is also obtained by Aspen Plus V10 simulation and has up an economic evaluation is done in order to identify and propose a safety measure for the plant design and to verify the economic potential and justify the project economy respectively. Okay, and now let's look at the market study. On year 2017, a total capacity of 30.3 million tons were produced globally, with China being the largest PET producer accounting to 30.8% of the global PET production. On year 2016, the global PET consumption, the global PET consumption totals to around 23.5 million million tons. As we can see from this pie chart, more than 70% is used for the production of drinking waters such as bottled water, carbonated soft drinks, and other drinks. And now, as for the crude oil price. As for sorry, as for the Paris oil, since we don't have since Paris oil is not an a common product in the in the global market, therefore it doesn't have an actual global pricing. Therefore, we use we to look at the crude oil as a reference to the the plant oil as a reference to the Paris oil demand. From year 1999, the 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 price of the crude oil has been increasing at up until 2008, when it picks up to 140 dollars per bar barrels per. 140 United States dollars per barrels. Then it then the price dropped in 2019 and it fluctuates up and down through up all the way till to, till the current year. This shows this shows that the crude oil pricing is unstable and this will create a market opportunity for the prices all during the during the pricing period of the crude during the unstable pricing period of the crude oil. Okay, and so from this graph. It also shows that the, the demand of, of crude oil is also high, starting from USA with a total demand of 19.87 million barrels per day, followed by China with 12.45 million barrels per day or demand, and Europe with a demand of 8.37 million barrels per day, and so on. And finally, as for hydrogen, the no, normally, normally and currently, the current pricing of hydrogen is around 52 ringgit to 65 ringgit per kg. From year, since year 1975, the, the global demand of hydrogen has been increasing from year to year until year 2018. And hydrogen is normally used, used for petroleum refining or ammonia production industry. This shows that is, there is a huge demand for, for hydrogen gas. Wait, hydrogen gas. Which will which will be economically beneficial to our project. Now I pass on the floor to my next colleague Priya Dashini. Hi, I'm Priya Dashini Murgan, and today I'll be presenting on the plant location selection criteria. So to achieve a successful long-term operational performance, choosing a proper plant location is very essential. Therefore, several criteria have been considered prior to selecting the best plant location. In this project, three locations have been shortlisted, which needs to be further evaluated. The potential location uh, that were chosen are Port Klang Slango, Tanjung Pelepas Port Johor, and also Pinning Port Pinning. The evaluation was made based on the selection criteria, such as the raw material availability, energy availability, water supply, climate suitability, flood and fire protection, transportation facilities, waste disposals, and also labor supplies. So for table one, uh, it basically uh, describes the comparison of selection criteria uh, of best possible locations for PET processing plants. 
where the information and also the data for each locations have been obtained and also analyzed to select the best and also the most strategic plant locations. So moving on to the uh, next table, table two, which uh, describes uh, the evaluation of the site location. So for this evaluation, um, the evaluation was carried out based on a grid analysis where for each factors or criteria, a weightage and also score was given accordingly with the range of 1 to 5. Then the score and also the weightage was multiplied and the total of the product was calculated. Then the location with the highest total uh, of product uh, was chosen as the best strategic location for the waste PET treatment plan. So based on the evaluation uh, table 2, it is clearly shown uh, that the location C, uh, which is the pinning port, pinning, was chosen as the best location because uh, it has the total product of 185 and also the higher percentages, uh, which is 93 percentage, and also ranked as first compared uh, to the other two locations, which are the Port Klang Slango and also Tanjung Pelepas Port, Johor. Hello, my name is Arifin Mohamad Anwar and I will be presenting the process screening section of our project. For the process screening, we made three block diagrams using three different processes to treat waste PET. The first process is pyrolysis. Pyrolysis is the breakdown of waste PET at high temperatures in the absence of oxygen. As you can see from figure 7, the waste PET and inert N2 gas is fed into a fluidized bed reactor where the PET reacts to produce pyrolysis gas, pyrolysis oil, char, and N2. The solid char particles are then separated in a cyclone separator. The remaining pyrolysis gas, pyrolysis oil, and N2 are fed into a liquid separate, vapor separator where the pyrolysis oil is separated from the pyrolysis gas and N2. The pyrolysis oil then undergoes an upgrading reaction in a tubular reactor to produce a higher energy value oil that can be marketed. On the other hand, the pyrolysis gas and N2 are fed into a cryogenic distillation column where N2 and H2 from the pyrolysis gas are separated from the other constituents of pyrolysis gas, which are hydrocarbons and a carbon oxide mixture. Finally, the N2 and H2 are separated using a membrane separator where the N2 gas can be recycled back into a fluidized bed reactor. The marketed products from this process will be H2 gas and upgraded pyrolysis oil. Next will be the use of methanolysis as the primary treatment method of waste PET. Methanolysis is the breakdown of waste PET using methanol at high temperatures and pressures. As you can see from figure 8, waste PET is first depolymerized in the presence of methanol to produce e.g. DMT and unreacted methanol. These components are separated in a rectifying column where e.g. can be stored for marketing and DMT has the additional option of being further processed into fresh PET. The main products from this process will be e.g. and DMT. Next, hydrolysis will be used as the primary treatment method of waste PET. Hydrolysis is the decomposition of waste PET in an acidic, alkaline or neutral environment. In this case, we will be using sulfuric acid to treat waste PET in an acidic condition. As you can see from figure 9, waste PET is first depolymerized using sulfuric acid to produce TPA crystals. These crystals are then separated from the sulfuric acid and the sulfuric acid can be recycled. After that, ammonium hydroxide is used to neutralize the remaining sulfuric acid in the TPA crystals. However, this will also cause the TPA crystals to dissolve. Therefore, the final precipitation step of TPA is important to recover the TPA crystals. Comparison between these three processes. For pyrolysis, the advantages are that it can be carried out at various operating conditions from a temperature of below 600 to above 800 degrees Celsius. It is also relatively simple and inexpensive. It also produces two high value products which is H2 gas and pyrolysis oil. However, its advantages are that the product stream can be difficult to separate. 
Meta-analysis, the advantages of it are that it can be incorporated directly into the PET production line to supplement PET production. It, there is also a large market demand for ethylene glycol, e.g. e.g. is used as, an, as a coolant, an antifreeze, and also a precursor to certain polymers. The disadvantages of metanalysis are that the process is becoming obsolete as the market for DMT is getting smaller because the production of PET now uses TPA more. Besides that, the product stream is also difficult to separate and water contamination will poison the catalyst used in metanalysis. Finally, the advantages of hydrolysis are that it can function with a wide variety of depolymerizing agents such as sulfuric acid, nitric acid, sodium hydroxide, and even water. Besides that, there is also a large market demand for TPA at a high price. However, hydrolysis has a relatively slow reaction rate. It is also difficult to achieve a high purity of TPA. After considering the advantages and disadvantages of these three processes, pyrolysis was chosen. Next, I will present the preliminary reactor optimization section of the project. These two tables, 5 and 6, show the reactors considered for the pyrolysis reaction and the upgrading of pyrolysis oil reaction. For the pyrolysis reactor, the first reactor considered was a fixed bed reactor. It has a low operating and maintenance cost, simple to operate, and it can be operated continuously. However, its disadvantages are that there is a high pressure drop, and carbon deposits on the catalyst can reduce its effectiveness, and a large temperature gradient may occur in the reactor. On the other hand, for a fluidized bed, its advantages are that the particles in the reactor are well mixed, and the temperature gradients in the reactor are uniform due to the constant agitation of the fluidized bed. It can also be operated continuously. However, the disadvantages are that high velocity fluids must be pumped into the reactor to fluidize the bed, and also a larger reactor size is required. Lastly, for the falling film reactor, its adva advantages are that the thin film of reactants results in a high heat transfer coefficient and it only relies on gravity to push the feed to the reactor. However, it has a high cost, it is difficult to maintain the optimal thickness of the reactant film, and it is not feasible for large scale processes. After considering these three reactors, the fluidized bed reactor was selected for the pyrolysis reactor. Next, three reactors were also considered for the upgrading of pyrolysis or the reaction. The first reactor was a batch reactor. Its advantages are that there is a high degree of flexibility in controlling product specifications and it is simple to operate. However, the feed and products must be loaded manually from the reactor, which will increase cost and take more time. It is also not feasible for large-scale processes. The next reactor is a tubular reactor. It, can, it offers a relatively high conversion and reactors can be installed in parallel to meet the requirements of a large feed capacity such as the one in this project. Lastly, Feeds or other chemicals can also be added throughout the reaction process. However, the shutdown and cleaning of a tubular reactor may be expensive. Lastly, for static mixers, the advantages are that it is easy to use and maintain, and the reactants will be well mixed. The disadvantages, however, are that it is not feasible for large-scale processes, and more labor is required to operate the mixer. After considering these three reactors, the tubular reactor was selected for the upgrading of pyrolysis oil reaction. Hi, I'm Nadir Hana and I'll be presenting on the process flow diagram before heat integration. Firstly, under PET pyrolysis process, the feed stream of PET in stream 1 is mixed with nitrogen gas in stream 5 to be fed into the pyrolysis reactor R101. PET is raised to the reaction temperature and melted in preparation for the pyrolysis reaction to increase its temperature from 30 degrees Celsius to 685 degrees Celsius through 3 heaters. E101, E102, and E103. The PET stream and nitrogen gas stream are combined in the mixer M101 to be fed into the pyrolysis reactor. Pump P101 is then used to push the feed into the pyrolysis reactor. Both the waste PET and nitrogen gas are fed into a fluidized bed reactor, R101, where PET is converted to pyrolysis gas, pyrolysis oil, and char after undergoing a reaction at extremely high temperatures. For the separation of pyrolysis products, the cyclone separator C101 is used to separate the solid char particles from the gaseous product stream leaving the pyrolysis reactor, which goes to the waste management facility. Compressor K101 is used to move the gas stream along the plant to subsequent equipment. The mixture of products is then cooled to a low enough temperature using three coolers, E104, E105, and E106, so that the heavy hydrocarbons in pyrolysis oil will condense. 
Then, pyrolysis gas and nitrogen gas are separated from the liquid pyrolysis oil with a vapor liquid separator C102. For the separation of pyrolysis gas, hydrogen and nitrogen, the mixture of pyrolysis gas and nitrogen gas is cooled through two coolers, E107 and E108, in preparation for cryogenic distillation. In the cryogenic distillation column C103, the gaseous mixture is separated into nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas, as well as the remaining mixture of pyrolysis gas. Membrane separator C104 is used to separate hydrogen gas from nitrogen, so that the purified hydrogen can be sold. Pump P102 is then used to push the gases along the plant. The pyrolysis gas is heated back to ambient temperature using a heater before being passed into the adsorption column. In the adsorption column C105, CO2 is adsorbed and removed from the pyrolysis gas so that the pyrolysis gas can be marketed. For the pyrolysis oil upgrading process, pump P103 is used to push the gases along the plant. The pyrolysis oil is heated in preparation for the upgrading reaction through two heaters, E110 and E111. Tubular reactor R102 is used to upgrade the pyrolysis oil in order to increase its heating value so that it can be used as a substitute for crude oil. Products from the tubular reactor are cooled using coolers E112 and E113 to condense water vapor in the stream. Water is then separated from the upgraded pyrolysis oil using a vapor liquid evaporator. Compressor K102 is used to push the upgraded pyrolysis oil into the adsorption column. In the adsorption column C107, CO2 is removed from pyrolysis oil so that the oil can be marketed. Figure 10 shows the simulation model built using Aspen Plus. Next is the preliminary mass balance. These are the mass balances for every equipment from the process flow diagram. For the fluidized bed reactor R101, the pyrolysis gas compositions were taken from previous literature at temperature of 685 degrees Celsius. However, as little information on the specific composition of pyrolysis oil upgrading was available in previous studies, the yield from reactor R102 was obtained from the simulation. The reaction conditions were taken from previous literature and then adjusted to achieve the desired yield. Next, Table 29 shows a comparison between the simulated and calculated mass balance. Based on this table, the percentage difference between the simulated and calculated mass balance is within a plus minus 5% range for all streams. Therefore, the calculated mass balance is valid. So moving on to the next uh, outline, which is the economics evaluation. So analyzing the economical potential of the project is very important to ensure a maximum uh, profitability and also having um, a minimum cost. So to calculate the economical potential EP um, of the waste PET treatment plant in Penang Port, several assumptions were made. So firstly, the plant uh, is assumed to be operatable for 24 hours per day for 350 days, which means uh, the plant will be, uh, will be operating for 8,400 hours annually. Secondly, uh, the raw material, the pricing for the raw materials and also the products are uh, assumed based on the market prices. Uh, which is shown in table 30 with the references provided. Thirdly, uh, the raw materials which is the polyethylene terephthalate uh, PET will be purchased from several companies or collectors such as the Alam Flora Sindhian uh from KL or Pahang, ESH Resource Management Sindhian Brahat from Penang, Low Recycle uh, Collection from Pera, uh, Treat Every Environment Special Sundian Berhad from Selangor and also Embed Tech uh, Sundian Berhad from Penang. Besides that, the exchange rate uh, used uh, in this project uh, was USD $1 uh, which is equals to RM4 ringgit and uh, 9 cent. 
Besides that, uh, the utility uh, prices of electricity was obtained uh, from the industrial pricing and uh, tariffs uh, rate by TNB. So basically for EP1, it can be calculated uh, based on the formula given uh, where EP1 is equals to total revenue minus total cost of the uh, raw materials. Um, so based on the table 31, we can obtain a positive EP1 value and therefore the PET based treatment plant uh, will be profitable. So as we already obtained the EP1 value, the EP2 can also be uh, calculated using the formula given where the EP2 is equals to total revenue minus total cost of the raw material minus the utility which is also meant uh, by EP2 is equals to EP1 minus the utility. So considering the mentioned utility cost based on the table 32, the EP2 value obtained is positive and therefore it can be said that the plant is economically feasible for operation. Moving on to the heat integration section of the project, Table 33 shows the stream data that we were able to extract from the process flow diagram. There are three cold streams and three hot streams. Figure 11 shows the grand composite curve plotted using the HINT software. Based on calculations, the minimum hot utility would be 1.56 kilowatts and the minimum cold utility would be about 78,000 kilowatts. The reason why the cold utility is so much higher than the hot utility is because of the cryogenic distillation column which requires a lot of cooling. Figure 12 shows the heat exchanger network design using the HIN software. Table 34 and 35 shows the energy consumed before and after heat integration. Before heat integration, the amount of utility used was 92,868.21 kilowatts, whereas after heat integration, the energy consumed was only 78,201.26. This meant that after heat integration, we had an energy savings of 15.79%. Besides energy savings, we also saved on capital costs as before heat integration, it required 6 heaters and 7 coolers to meet the utility requirements. However, after heat integration, we only needed 1 heater, 4 coolers and 4 heat exchangers to meet the utility requirements of the plant. For the PFD after heat integration, we managed to change to a total number of four heat exchangers, which are E101, E103, E108, and E109. The number of heaters, coolers, and heat exchangers after heat integration are 1, 4, and 4 respectively, compared to 6 heaters and 7 coolers before heat integration. Next is the PNID. I will pass to Yong to explain on the PNID part. I am Yong Wenxing. This is the PNID after heat integration for the plant. Three major equipment are paid to further discuss on the control strategies. First of all is the fleet bed reactor R101. The temperature control is done by measuring the temperature in the fleet bed reactor R101 and control the flow rate of the low pressure steam at heater E102. The pressure control is done by controlling the flow rate of the outlet stream of R101 so that the pressure of the fleet bed reactor R101 can meet the set point. For vapor liquid separator C102, the pressure is also controlled by manipulating the flow rate of the outlet stream so that the pressure in the vapor liquid separator C102 can meet the set point. The flow rate control is done by measuring the inlet stream flow rate of the column and control the flow rate of the feed by controlling the flow control valve 303. For the adsorption column C107, the temperature control is done by measuring the temperature of the column and control the flow rate of the low pressure steam at the heater. The pressure control is done by controlling the flow rate of the outlet stream so that the pressure in the column can meet the set point. 
The flow rate is controlled by measuring the inlet stream flow rate of the column and then control the flow rate of the feed from flow control valve 902. To control the flow ratio, the product flow and reflux of the column is measured and the flow rate of the reflux is, is manipulated to carry out the ratio control. For the hazard part, the first node is at Paralysis unit, fluid back reactor R101 at stream 6. For the flow, when there is a high flow, it might cause by the control valve FCV201 is open. The consequences of it is the efficiency of the paralysis process will decrease due to the increase in the pressure drop across R101. We can install pressure safety valve PSV301 for R101 and also install a bypass system for R101. The action taken is to install high pressure alarm PAH301 at R101 to alert the operator on the increase of the pressure drop across R101. When there is a low flow happen, it might due to the malfunction of pump P101. Low efficiency in the paralysis process will happen because of the desired flow rate is not achieved. We can install pressure control system at R101 and the action taken can be installed Low flow alarm FAL201 at stream 5 to alert the operator on the low flow rate into R101. When there is a reverse flow, it might cause by the blockage at the control valve PCV301. It will cause black back flow from stream 7. Therefore, we can install a check valve CV201. The action taken can be install high pressure alarm PAH301 at R101 to alert the operator on the back flow of R101. For the temperature, when there is a high temperature, it might cause by the malfunction on the heater E102 and also the high flow rate on the hot source into E101. If this happens, the lifespan of the reactor R101 will decrease. So we have to install a backup cooling system at stream 6. And we can also carry out action like install high temperature alarm PAH301 to alert the operator on the increase of the temperature in R101. For the low temperature, it might cause by the failure on the heater E102 and the low flow rate on the hot source into E101. This will cause incomplete reaction because of the desired operating temperature is not achieved. The safeguard is to install the backup heating system at stream 6. The action taken is to install low pressure temperature alarm TAL302 to alert the operator on the decrease of temperature in R101. For the pressure, when there is a high pressure, it might cause by the malfunction of the control of PCV301 and this will cause the column damage due to the pressure build up in R101. 101 exceeding the desired pressure. Therefore, we can install a pressure safety valve PS V301 and carry out action like install a high pressure alarm PAH301 at the paralysis unit to alert the operator on the high pressure in R101. When there is a low pressure, it might be cause of the failure of the pump P101. This will cause the incomplete reactions as the operating pressure is not achieved. Therefore, we can install a pressure control system for R101 as a safeguard. And the action taken can be install a low pressure alarm PAL302 for R101 to alert the operator on the low pressure in R101. For the second note, it is at Paralysis Gas and Oil Separation Unit, Wiper Liquid Separator C102 at stream 14. For flow, when there is a high flow, it might cause by the malfunction of the control valve FCV303. It will cause incomplete separation process because of the increase in the spray velocity across C102. The safeguard can be install bypass system at stream 14 and also install pressure safety valve PSV401. 
The action taken can be install high flow alarm FAL301 at screen 14 to alert the operator regarding the failure of control valve FCV303. For the low flow, it might cause by the low flow of the inlet stream from the cooling system. It will cause pump P103 to damage because of the low flow at the outlet stream from C102. Therefore, the safeguard is to install flow control system at stream 14 and the action taken can be install low flow alarm FAL302 to alert the operator on the low flow rate at stream 14. For high temperature, it might cause by the malfunction of the cooler E104 and E105 and also the low flow rate on the cool source into E103. This will cause the separation process to be not efficient because the temperature exceeds the desired operating temperature. The safeguard can be install the backup cooling system at spring 14 and the action taken is to install high temperature alarm TAH401 to alert the operator on the increase of temperature in C102. For low temperature, it might cause by the high flow rate on the cool source into E103 and this will cause the incomplete reaction because of the desired operating temperature is not achieved. The safeguard can be installed the backup heating system for the separation process and the action taken can be installed low temperature alarm TAL402 to alert the operator on the decrease of temperature in C102. For the pressure, when there is a high pressure, it might cause by the malfunction of the control valve PCV401. This can uh, cause column damage due to the pressure built up in C102 that exceeding the desired pressure. Therefore, we can install pressure safety valve PSV401 as, as the safeguard and also install a high pressure alarm PAH401 to alert the operator on the high pressure in C102. For low pressure, it might cause by the blockage of the control valve FCV303. It will cause incomplete reaction because the operating pressure is not achieved. So the safeguard can be installed pressure control system at C102 and the action taken can be installed a low pressure alarm PAL401 to alert the operator on the low pressure in C102. For the third node, it is at Pyrolysis Oil Purification Unit at Subgen Column C107 at Stream 35. For high flow, it might cause by the malfunction of the control valve FCV902. The consequences is the incomplete of the purification process due to the increase of the spray velocity across C107. The safeguard can be installed flow and ratio control for C107. The action taken can be installed high flow alarm FAH901 to alert the operator regarding the high flow at stream 35. For low flow, it might cause by the failure of the compressor K102 and it will cause production offset due to the insufficient flow. Safeguard can be install flow control system at stream 35 and action taken can be install low flow alarm FAL902 to alert the operator on the low flow rate at stream 35. For temperature, when there's high temperature, it might cause by the high flow of hot source into E109 and this will cause the purification process to be insufficient as it exceeds the desired operating temperature. The safeguard is to install the backup cooling system at stream 35 and the action taken can be to install high temperature alarm TAH1001 to alert the operator on the increase of temperature in C107. When there's a low temperature, it might due to the high flow rate on the cold source into E109. This will cause incomplete purification process because the desired operating temperature is not achieved. Therefore, we can install backup heating system at stream 35 as a safeguard. An action taken can be install low temperature alarm TAL1001 to alert the operator on decrease of temperature in C107. For high pressure, it might cause by the failure of control valve FCV902 and the consequences is it will damage the column because the pressure built up in C102 
7 exceed the desired pressure. The safeguard can be install pressure safety valve PSV1001 and the action taken can be install a high pressure alarm PAH1001 to alert the operator on the high pressure in C107. For low pressure, it might due to malfunction of compressor K102 and this will cause incomplete reaction as the operating pressure is not achieved. As a safeguard, we can install pressure control system at C107 and action like install a low pressure alarm PAL1002 can be taken to alert to the operator on the low pressure at C107. Last but not least will be the conclusion and recommendations. First of all, pyrolysis was used to treat waste PET. The production rate of pyrolysis and hydrogen gas are this and this respectively. On the other hand, the economic potential 1 and 2 are this and this respectively, meaning that our process is economically feasible. After that, before heat integration, we use some like recommendations. For the recommendations, the first one is that detailed economic analysis such as payback period should be taken into consideration. A more detailed economic analysis would be calculating economic potential tree, which also takes into account the equipment cost. Besides that, we should also continue optimizing the operating conditions of each unit operation. We can do this by selecting operating conditions with the lowest energy requirement to save utility costs and also to increase the plant's economic potential. Finally, we should continue researching for other potential byproducts which can be produced from PET. Having more viable products will increase the profitability of the plan. That is our presentation and thank you for listening.